You're tuned in to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. That's not to say that they don't respect the run game that you have, but you're talking about one quarterback leading the, the conference in passing so far this year. And remember, he didn't start the first game. All right. Still played a lot, though. And also bringing some humor to your day. I, I just don't want to disappoint you. I just... As much as I disappoint you, I don't want to disappoint you in some things that you expect from me. Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Nice to have you with us this morning. It is uh, election day, so if you have not voted yet, get out uh, today when the uh, the old polls open and uh, exercise your right if uh, you so choose. Yeah, don't go vote before they open. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody hands you a ballot and says, hey... Here's your ballot. I'll go ahead and turn it in for you. Yeah. This is not one of those. This is not one of those deals, right? No sense getting a break-in and entering charge. No, just no. to try to vote. Just to just to try to just to try to vote. No, that's not. Uh, it's not worth that. So, uh, you hopefully you'll uh, get out and do that today. They close, I believe, at uh, seven o'clock tonight. That's the traditional time. So on this uh, this Tuesday. Uh, election day all right we come to you this morning from the first united bank double t 97.3 studios i look forward to hearing from you on the yates flooring center chat line benchmark hotline is open as well at 806-771-0973 the red raiders and lady raiders opened up basketball play last night also uh, the head football coach met with the fourth estate yesterday to uh speak about uh, this past weekend against tcu and this upcoming weekend against ku which Texas Tech will uh, battle the Jayhawks at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. Our Optimum Game Day Live coverage will begin at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. I was thinking about this coming in going, man, it sure seems like we've not very had many road games this year. And, and uh, at the end of the – because you've got two of your last three are at home, which is ideal, especially when you're trying to get to be bowl eligible. Uh, you got this week, then you play at Iowa State, and then you finish at home against Oklahoma. But uh, – you know, as far as the, the traveling is concerned, haven't had a whole lot, haven't had success uh, on the road, but haven't had to, to go away from the friendly confines a whole lot. So you got that going for you. Yep, that's good. Yeah. No, it's positive. It is, it is. It is good. It's, uh, it is positive. All right. Uh, basketball last night. What did you see uh, that stood out to you that, that you liked as far as the, the men's game is concerned? Um, I, I, you can see there's a ton of talent there. Mm-hmm, no the doubt. First thing that jumped out, I think, uh, I think Daniel Bacho was was impressive. He was, and you think of him as a big, strong, physical guy, and I thought he he showed some finesse with being able to put the ball on the floor and get to the rim as well. So, um, I like that. I thought you shot it well from from beyond the arc. So, I thought the perimeter shooting, which we all know going back to last year, was a problem for that team. Uh, I thought felt like you had a lot of different guys that could uh, fill it up from beyond the arc. Uh, Tech last night, 24-46 from the field, 52.2%. 7 of 18 from distance last night, 38.9. 2 of 9 in the second half, 5 of 9 in the first half. And then 18 of 22 from the free throw line last night. Uh, Texas Tech, in terms of points scored last evening, you got uh, 12 from Daniel Bacho, and then uh, just... You know, kind of all just spread out all throughout. Uh, Kevin O'Banner had nine. Uh, Jason Tyson had eight. Jalen. I said Jalen Tyson had eight. Uh, seven points for Davion Harmon. He had seven. Nine also from Kerwin Walton uh, last night. Um, and uh, Pop Isaacs had uh, had six points. Both of his were three pointers. He can shoot the ball. He can. He can, yeah. shoot the, he can shoot the ball. Made another one after he stepped out of bounds. He definitely looks like he's got a quick trigger and mm-hmm. can fill it up. Had 19 assists on your 24 made field goals, but 20 turnovers last night. That That's something you're going to want to fix. Yeah, that's, I mean, first game for so many new players. Mm-hmm. No no doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pop had five. That wasn't ideal. And then no. uh, DeMorian Williams had four uh, last night. Uh, what did you think of Jalen Tyson's shoes last night? <laughs> Loved him. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I, I've gotten to this point now <clears throat> where I immediately go to everybody's shoes. I'm like, okay, uh, and it's starting to irritate me as well. Sorry, that's all right. Uh, that's all right. That's 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 okay. It's not it's mm-hmm. not your fault. Uh, Tech had 28 points in the paint last night and uh, 15 off of uh, turnovers by uh, Northwestern State. They had uh, 49 points, led by Isaac 
Haney, he had 16, and Jamonta Black had 12. What did you think of their big fella, Jordan Wilmore? He didn't – I mean, he's big. He had no points and two rebounds. He's like 7'3". Mm-hmm. Like 3-0-something or other. Is that right? Is that, what yeah. he, is that what he goes? I mean, yeah, he was, he's a large man. He was large, but uh, was not in charge. He was he was not. Uh, zero points and two rebounds was mm-hmm. clearly not in charge. He had a one block shot. His uh, his plus minus was minus eleven. He was not the leader in that though. Joshua yeah, I can't can't believe anybody on their team when you lose like that would would have been plus. Uh, one guy was zero and he played a minute fifty four. <laughs> okay, everybody else was yeah. everybody else was uh, was minus uh, on the night. So uh, they get off uh, they get off to a good start. I mean they. Get off with a win. Uh, it wasn't uh, a Monet or a Picasso by any stretch of the imagination. Taking care of business Monday yeah. night. T C O B, right? T C O B. Taking care of business. I right? think you don't have to put the O in there because it's only two letters. Like you can just say T C B. Oh, taking care of business? Yeah. Oh, instead of taking care of business? No, I, I like when you make the acronym there, don't you? You don't have to if it's like a. Mm. Like limit. the FBI is FBI, not FB. Oh, oh, I. Oh, oh I. Yeah. Of, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Of Investigation, yeah, but right. there's no oh. TCB, taking care of business. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you're probably right about that. Okay, so uh, the men will play again on Thursday. So their turnaround is quick. They play Texas Southern, and we'll have that for you at 6. The tip time is at 7 on uh, Thursday night. Uh, meanwhile, Lady Raiders in action last night. They took on Corpus Christi. Uh, the Islanders from uh, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. Wonky start, uh, trailed after one, 16-9, but then held them to three points in the second quarter, outscoring them 21-3. to three. And uh, Tech getting some nice performances last night uh, from um, a variety of players. It kind of spread it all around Jasmine Lewis. She had a career-high 15 points last night. Bailey Maupin had 11 Riley McKinney had 11 last night. And Katie Farrell, uh, six rebounds, three points, and excuse me, five points, six rebounds, and three assists last night for her. And four steals. Yeah, and four steals. And she was scrappy. And she is uh, all that they have talked about that she would be in terms of her being uh, a floor general and, and uh, you know, not afraid to fight and, and uh, the ability to pass the ball and just – all, the, all those things. So I think she's going to be a, a, a really nice addition uh, for the Lady Raiders. They get 35 off the bench last night, 38 in the paint. Uh, Lady Raiders went 4 of 12 from distance last night, 27 of 49 from the field, and then 11 of 16 from the free throw line last night. So good, about, and good evening. How about Katie Farrell's plus minus? Tw- plus 29 in 24 minutes of action. <laughs> It's impressive. That's extremely impressive. And and there was that, a, is, that is really good stuff. Good stretch of the fourth that quarter. She, she shows did not you play. play. Yeah, she plays both ends of the floor. Yeah. Uh, and she was also probably in for most of the twenty-one to three runs. So yeah. That'll also yeah. That'll also pad that a little bit. But still, that's mm-hmm. a really impressive number. Mm-hmm. And they, I think they, you know, they sat her for the most part in the fourth quarter just because they want. She's played a lot of minutes over the last four years, and they want to take care of her knees. So take care of her legs, you know, to, so it's a long season. So a uh, good start for them last night, 69 to 49. They're, they're not in action for another week. So they've got uh, time to look at this one, correct some things, and uh, see what they did right and see what they did wrong. But uh, we're off and running as far as uh, Texas Tech basketball is concerned. If you have thoughts, comments, if you're at the ball game last night and you have observations you want to share along, you can on the Yates Flooring Center chat line, pitch bar hotline as well. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, getting you ready for today's sports day. You know, three of the first four games have been at home, so you know at some point in time you're going to have to venture out outside the 806, so that'll be that'll start this week. While having a little fun along the way. Always good if you can blame it on somebody else, right? Yeah, sure. Especially some media guy. Sure. Right, some media guy. Catch the show live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. Tuesday, November the 8th, 2022. With the State in Sports History, here's Jeff McGuire. Today would be a really good day mm-hmm. to do something awesome in sports. Because, I don't know what you're going to do. Be- because there's nothing? Because there's not a lot. Okay. <laughs> 
history, however, there's kind of a big event that we'll get to here in a minute. But uh-huh. first, in 1951, New York Yankees catcher Yogi Berra wins his first of three MVP awards. 1966, Frank Robinson of the Baltimore Orioles is selected as the AL MVP. It's the first player to win MVP in both leagues. Cool. 1966, President Lyndon Bain Johnson signs the antitrust immunity to the NFL-AFL merger. Which is still huge today for those NFL owners. They will uh, bury bodies to keep that antitrust. Yes, that's right. <laughs> 1970, Tom Dempsey of the New Orleans Saints kicks an NFL record 63-yard field goal. I should say then NFL record. It's been beaten a couple of times since then. My in-laws were at that game, and Tim Siegel, former Texas Tech tennis coach, was at that game. I'm told he really is a big fan of the Saints. I've heard that rumor. Yeah. Heard that rumor before. Yeah, although although the <clears throat> the Saints didn't uh, really didn't make show Coach Siegel very happy, happy last, last night. night. No, no, no. I don't think there's a bigger Saints fan. Ooh, that's a good question. Not, not in this town. <laughs> oh, definitely not here. And not in many. 1990, Daryl Strawberry signs a five-year contract with the L.A. Dodgers. And in 1997, Tampa Bay Devil Rays named their first manager, Larry Rothschild. It is National Cappuccino Day. Happy birthday to Gordon Ramsay, who's 56. Rapper Tech Nine is 51. Parker Posey, 54. Tara Reed, 47. Uh, Mary Hart is 72. Young Carlo Stanton is 33. And Sam Bradford is 35. Did you see the picture of Giancarlo and Aaron Judge at the New York City Marathon with Judge's wife? Mm-mm. I mean, she, I don't have any idea how tall she is, but she, she was very. in between the two of them. <laughs> I mean, she looked every bit of like two feet tall standing next to those two. I'm only slightly exaggerating. I, she, I mean, it looks like Aaron Judge is married. I didn't know he's married. They said Aaron Judge's wife. The picture did. I mean, she, she can't be... Over. Yeah, she's like 5'2 or something. Yeah, 5'2. Yeah. 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 But sitting next to Judge, everybody looks small. And being small to begin with doesn't help in any way, shape, or mm-hmm. form in that picture. Uh, on this day in 1962, the famous Ford Rotunda stand, uh, stands in Dearborn, Michigan for the last time. The next day, it's destroyed in a massive fire. Some 1.5 million people visited the Rotunda each year, making it the fifth most popular tourist attraction in the U.S. behind Niagara Falls, Smoky Mountain National Park, the Smithsonian, and the Lincoln Memorial. Ford had commissioned it in 1933's uh, for the Century of Progress exhibition in Chicago and had moved it to Dearborn when the fair ended. It was 130 feet high and designed to look like a stack of gear surrounded, surrounding a 92-foot wide courtyard. Many people who grew up in Detroit during the 50s remember the Rotunda for its spectacular Christmas displays. Every year, it had a 37-foot tall tree, an elaborate Santa's workshop, and a life-size nativity that the National Council of Churches called the largest and finest in the country. wonder why they didn't rebuild it. We'll get to that. Each year's installation had a different theme. 1958's display boasted a 15,000-piece hand-carved miniature circus. For instance, and in 1962, the show that was scheduled to be that year uh, would be a woodland tab- tablet featuring 2,500 dolls. While the workmen were preparing the rotunda for the display, someone overturned a fire pot or a heater on the building's tar roof. Just after lunch, an employee spotted the flames of the ceiling on the main floor. Within a few minutes after the first alarm, the New York Times reported the, octog- the octagonal top of the building resembled a huge chimney with smoke and flames pouring out. Workers evacuated and the building was burned to the ground in less than an hour. Mm. A group of school children who were visiting the rotunda from South Bend watched in horror from a cafeteria across the street. It would have cost at least $15 million at the time, which would be $145 million today to rebuild it. The company opted to say not to spend the money 
and raise the building's remains instead. And that is this day in sports history. In other words, they cashed out. Took the insurance <laughs> money. <laughs> Which is what you can do if you play our little game, Secret Word. All you have to do is go to double dot 973com when I give you this word and enter it in. And you could cash out of $10,000 from double T973 in the home zone with our secret word local contest that we want you to win. So our secret word at 651 this morning is Trojans, as in USC Trojans, as in the head coach is a former Texas Tech grad assistant, Lincoln Riley, who now coaches the USC Trojans. Trojans, T-R-O-J-A-N-S, Trojans. Former Texas Tech player, too. Yeah, yeah. Do we have to claim him right now, though? Da, 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 da. I always liked USC. Mm-hmm. I always liked USC. I mean, just the da, 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 the horse, you know, the whole thing. And I mean, I know that we've got other guys in the program history mm-hmm. and uh, different athletic pr- parts that maybe don't banner batter, banners far and wide as much as they should. But do we have to claim that one? What, what What's your... He just, crying he, over Baker Mayfield. Okay. Like he had died because he was suspended. I mean, I I don't I don't root for him and that's really one of the major reasons where I stopped rooting for him yeah. over that. I that's thought that right. was ridiculous. Uh pretty pitiful as far as I was concerned. Um I I actually one of my best friends is a big USC fan, so I kind of pull for the Trojans as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, I have a hard time rooting for Lincoln. I thought that was a just a terrible look for him. Terrible look. Yeah, I, I like mm-hmm. the like kind of what they have, and mm-hmm. not necessarily the individual coaches, but mm-hmm. some of the players that they've had and been pretty spectacular and fun to fun to watch. All right, uh, that is this day in sports history and our secret word six fifty two this morning here on the morning drive just so you know chuck you were dead on judge's wife is five two five two okay. i found a very interesting story about how at spring training one year when she was just the girlfriend she got pulled over for an extreme oh, dwi that's right. oh that's right extreme one or dui i don't know whatever yeah. and uh there was a body cam vid- video and she dropped on the police officer don't you know who i am right. my boyfriend is her judge <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I can't about believe that. i had never heard that story no i remember the yeah. story i do <laughs> yeah don't you know who <laughs> That's i am hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. he didn't i don't think and he did judge is like the most private person ever so i i'm gotta believe kind of that just killed her. him yeah yeah that, yeah. that, that, that went went out uh went out to be okay on that. If uh, you ever say that, you are the worst person in the world at that point. <laughs> don't you know who I am? Don't you know it, who I am? Because if they do, they don't care. And if mm-hmm. they don't, you're not as famous as you think you are. Right. Yeah, if they don't know, that's right. No, I don't. No, no I no. don't know who I, you are. I don't know. I don't know who yeah. you are. I'm sorry. Who Who are you? Not like who is in. Now, fortunately for us, we don't ever have to have to worry about that with Chuck. Because everybody, everybody knows, knows Chuck what he is. Oh, That's no, right. no, no, no. Uh, this from the Eight Morning Center chat line. I'm just going to read it exactly as, as it's stated here. Jamer, who had your favorite pair of brightly colored shoes on the court last night? Stop trolling me, people. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to make a conscious effort, conscious effort to just let it go. Okay? Okay. Just not complain about it. Just not be the old fuddy-duddy that I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. I promise you it is not bothering me any less. I am just not going to complain about it all okay. season. Do long. you think you're the only one bothered by it? I don't know. I, Rest I, assured you are not. I don't know. I'm not sure. It 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 really does irk me. I don't understand why we can't wear the school colors. That, that's I, They don't have to match each other. I just wear the school colors. That's it. If you want to play for a yellow or green school, go play for a yellow or green school. <laughs> if you want to play for Texas Tech, wear red, white, or black or gray. It's pretty simple. Sorry. It's not unreasonable. I, I, God forbid you don't stand out and stick out from the rest of the crowd that you just fit in as a team. Oh, it's just so much to ask people nowadays. 
See, you did it, Chuck. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you got out on the end of that limb. <laughs> and I'm done. I'm not talking about it ever again. All right. You're listening to the Morning Drive Podcast from Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. A little bit later on tonight, uh, we'll have uh, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. That'll be at 8. And then the Rangers playing at Seattle uh, tonight. And also bringing some humor to your day. Was it pretty big? Yeah, I mean, it's impressive. It's, yeah, was it fascinating? It was. I thought it was fascinating. It kind of smelled, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hear the show live weekday mornings at six on Double T ninety seven three or on the Double T ninety seven three mobile app. Double T ninety seven three studio. Look forward to hearing from you today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line and also the Benchmark Hotline. We'll have uh, high school fan zone. Jeff mentioned that in his Sports Center with uh, coaches from Monterey and Lubbock High. And then tomorrow, coaches from uh, Friendship and Lubbock Cooper. Both uh, those uh, two schools are still involved with football, and we'll have uh, Friday night football uh, on the air for you for both uh, Lubbock Cooper and uh, for Friendship. Lubbock Cooper on 100.7 The Score and Friendship here on Double T 97.3. So that's uh, that's exciting as uh, they'll march on. So that'll yes. be, that'll be, that'll be cool. Yeah, good luck to them. Course, and it's great that they both get to host in the first round. Yeah, play at home. Uh, Friday Night Live, but we'll have that uh, after the Friendship Game, your high school scoreboard show, kind of get you up to date on what's taking place. And then Saturday morning, as part of Optimum Game Day Live, presented by United Supermarkets, it's the Saturday morning quarterback. That'll be at 7 a.m. with our man Garrett Luft and his trusty sidekick, Andres Flores. Okay. Look forward to that. And then... Uh, the kick between KU and Texas Tech at six, as uh, the Red Raiders will work this week to uh, try to figure out a way to win number five uh, of the season, uh, heading into the, the home stretch of this year. Next week they're at Iowa State, and then finish up uh, the day after, two days after Thanksgiving, at home against Oklahoma. It'd be nice if you were already bowl eligible going to that game. Take a little pressure off. It'd be extremely nice. You know, and. and and then you kind of put yourself in a position where... And then, and then you'd have like the excitement of feeling like, okay... Get a, get a little bit better bowl We've trip. got our six, and now let's let's play free and easy and mm-hmm. have some fun. But, you know, this you know chance to beat an Oklahoma team that you don't, you don't get to beat Oklahoma a lot, playing at home and all that. I just... I'm so confused. Not, I don't know if confused is the right word, but I'm interested and intrigued to see what it's going to be like. I just... I mean, for both teams and mm-hmm. both fan bases and what that's going to be. I just don't know if that's going to be awesome and necessary and, you know, it means something to everybody or if mm-hmm. it's just not going to be. I mean, I, I don't think this will happen. Clearly, let me say that. I don't think this will happen. But if you lost your next two and it meant nothing to you, I mean, I think that place could be empty. Yeah. I mean, I think it could be a woeful environment. Yeah, but if you won the next two, and I think it could be a, a really good environment. Really, yeah, good, really good environment. Yeah. Or yeah. even if you're maybe, if you win one of the next two, and you're playing for the right to get to a bowl game, hopefully you'd have, hopefully you'd have somewhat of an atmosphere. Maybe not the, maybe not yeah. the same. Kind of depends on which one you win. If you, you know, if you win at home Saturday, does that inspire more folks to come back? For the final home game. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, and not to, not to to mock or make fun, but I've just, you know, with with senior day coming up, I'm just I'm so confused about super seniors and people that still have a year of eligibility or seniors that may have two years of eligibility. You know, it's like how many times, like Tyler Shuck. Yeah, how many times you trot I mean, back out there? I mean, we have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, and Tony Bradford's in the same situation too. Yeah. He's got he's got a lot of guys have that extra year because of uh because of COVID. Um uh, but they and sooner or later, I mean we're gonna we'll op, we'll get out of that, but it's gonna it's gonna take a couple more years before you're finally kind of through all the COVID players. Still more. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> I it's, know. It's, right. it was only twenty it was only two years ago. So I mean mm-hmm. you got a, almost a, a lifetime, you know, to kind of get yourself yeah, kids that are haven't even been born yet, and they'll be kindergartners. Are like, uh, he was. This is his COVID senior year. <laughs> like, what is that, Dad? 
Yeah. You know, it's only fair, though, that we honor some of these guys twice because there's a bunch of guys we never get to honor because they head off early to the NFL or the NBA or, or they whatever. Transfer. Or they transfer out <laughs> that we would want to honor in their in our own regard. But, you know, yeah. nothing wrong with honoring people a couple of times. M- multiple multiple senior nights because they've you know, been at XYZ and then ZYU and then ABC. So they got, you know, all these different. Oh, that was my senior jersey from, you know, Sheboygan. This is my senior jersey from... You know, Townsend State, and this is my one from Texas Tech. It's all pomp and circumstance, yeah, Chuck. Right. You gotta love it a little yeah. bit. Embrace it. Embrace it. All right, we're having a party. <clears throat> Everybody gets a jersey party in a nice little frame and a plaque. All right, lots of uh, lots of discussion uh, yesterday, and I'm sure over the weekend with uh, your individual uh, coordinator meetings that you had in your neighborhood, or your garage, or you know, your friendly watering hole, or you know, church sanctuary or wherever it, wherever it took place. Uh, Coach uh, Joey McGuire meeting with the media yesterday. Uh, the discussion is going for it on fourth down. Here's Coach McGuire. Yeah, we've, we've done that a couple times. Usually, you know what, when we've done that, we've kind of audibled a couple times during the game. Once we kind of get into it and we're saying these are the numbers, you know, frustrating. I mean, I'll give you a perfect – I mean, I, I know what everybody's going to talk about. It's 20 to 17. You know, it's fourth and two or third and two. Um, you know, I, I go back and I think, you know, I, I went into the – we've been a little bit different to where we've been really focused on getting first downs and, and continuing drives. I mean, at one point – and that we're probably still in the top two or three of first downs in the country, you know, and just kind of what we are as a team. And and uh, I talked to Zach earlier in the week, and I said, hey, look, man, if we're at the number, especially whenever it's a, a number we feel good about, I want you to be really aggressive on third down. And we were, um, you know, and, and, you know, right there uh, leading up to that point in, in the weeks, we had probably gotten the first down on third down whenever it was something like that instead of being so aggressive. I, I, and so you, you kind of look at that and go, okay, third and two, you know, I'm just curious why you need to be so aggressive. And I would guess that was something that they were seeing in TCU's defense or feeling like they could take advantage of. Kind of um, a matchup. Matchups or, you know, individual matchups down the field or feeling like they had a propensity to play closer to the line of scrimmage and peek into the backfield and you might have an opportunity with double moves to, to get down the field. You know, unfortunately, you lost some of your key big guys that can make those plays down the field. Um, I, I personally am not a big fan of the throwing the ball up uh, for a 50-50 ball to Miles Price. I mean, it's, he's he's a shorter receiver. I mean, you gotta you got to lead him and let him run underneath it, right, and let him use his speed. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the, the injuries probably affected that a little bit. Um, I don't know. There's a, just a, a lot that could could be the reason that they felt like they, they wanted to do that. But, man, I, I just – it just puts you in a situation where you're in those fourth down now and fourth and twos and fourth and threes and fourth and fours where, okay, you you may be able to pick them up 75% of the time, and that's great, and it moves you down the field. But, man, when you don't, it puts your defense in a really bad spot, and it changes the game in a hurry. Yeah. and I and mean, it is a, a massive momentum swing. Mm-hmm. Especially with, you know, kind of what you had left on the clock. The first one, you know, when it was 20 to 17, and it was fourth and two, and, and then you don't get it, and you give up the ball basically your own 36-yard line. Uh, we'll get uh, a couple things more from Coach McGuire uh, from his uh, media event yesterday. 7-10 this morning. Your thoughts, comments this morning on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to DoubleT973.com. Getting your sports day started the right way. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 973 breaking down the biggest games. If Texas Tech does not win the Big 12 Football Conference, who are you rooting for to win the conference? If Tech does not win it this year. Well, busting some chops along the way. I hold back on sending you stuff. I mean, I'm very, very, very judicious. We spend three hours a day, five right? days a week together. Why, yeah. do, why would yeah. we need to 
communicate during the weekends. <laughs> right, we save don't. it for the show. We, yeah, we, say, we do. We save it for the show. The- Tune into the Morning Drive live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. I'd say hit me with your best shot, but it might put me out, and then I wouldn't be able to talk. So just give it to me without your best shot. <laughs> Don't make your, your best, best pickoff move. Your best words. Your best words, not your best shot. Okay. I might have a glass jaw. All right. Okay. Uh, my question for you guys today, I'm going to go Red Raider basketball. And I just want to go back to last night's game and mm-hmm. just ask a pretty simple, basic, generic question. What, what did you like most about last night's contest and what, what you saw from the Red Raiders in the first game of the season? You know, the, the thing that stood out to me the most was just how athletic they are and um, how quick they are. And uh, it was just... Um, and not to, I mean, I don't know if they're more athletic than last year or two years ago or three years ago, but just a, just seemed to be really talented uh, with regard to whether it was Elijah Fisher, the freshman, or Jalen Tyson, the transfer, or Pop Isaacs, the freshman. Heck, Kevin O'Banner, Daniel Bacho. Um, so I, I would tell you uh, the level of athleticism and talent stood out to me. Jeff? You took care of business in a game that you needed to take care of business in. Um, you're not going to learn anything from these games for how this team is going to play in Big 12 play. And the, the competition just isn't there. But you did what you were supposed to do, and you had a balanced attack. It wasn't just a, a one guy scoring all your points for you. You got a double-double out of the guy you should have gotten a double-double out of. You played Mark Adams' defense. You held serve. And I know that's kind of a weak answer, but there's a chance you wouldn't have done those things in the first game of the year. I like that they got the job done. That's a good step for the next game where their goal is to get the job done again. You know, for the schools that have a hard, like in that first game, there's a little bit of a, I don't know, hiccup or you just don't play really well. Maybe Mm -hmm. like TCU or something, you don't play well and maybe you're kind of, a little high on yourselves and maybe you don't come in all fired up or whatever. I, I'm just like that atmosphere. I don't know that you can do that. It, the, that we have as a fan base, right? I mean, the way our, our crowd is so good at tech basketball games mm-hmm. right now, atmosphere is so phenomenal. I don't know how a guy can come out and not be just like, wow, this is fun to play in front of, you know? No, no doubt. So, um, I, I think that's, that wasn't my answer, but that was just kind of talking about, you know, taking care of business part of it. Um, my answer is I just thought here's what I thought was really, really cool. I thought on the first possession of the season on defense, you forced a shot clock violation. I thought that was awesome mm-hmm. for this team that is built on defense. And I thought that two newcomers in Davion Harmon and Kerwin Walton taking charges in the first half newcomers that you want to buy into your system and what you're doing and all the above. I thought that was a really awesome sign as well that they have bought into the culture and what we're trying to do here. And all the, I mean, Walton was thought of, what what, what do we hear about Kerwin Walton? Oh, he's a three point shooting specialist. And what do we see that dude doing last night, making awesome cuts and moving without the basketball and getting to the rim. Loved it. Lo- loved a couple of his baskets where he was moving away from the ball and and um, just I love guys that keep moving, guys, girls, whatever. Just keep moving. Don't be stagnant. So uh, I was a big fan of that. So I just like uh, you know the newcomers feel like uh, they they've bought in, and uh, the freshmen looked really good. And I don't think we even really saw much of uh, the potential of Elijah Fisher last night. We saw the great block hustling down the court, but offensively he didn't he didn't do much. I think he's going to do a lot more. But I thought you saw more of Pop Isaacs where he was well, he was ready to go as soon as the lights turned on. Mm-hmm. He you know, doesn't seem like he's bashful about getting up shots. No, no. Uh, he was uh, 2 of 4, had 6 points. Elijah Fisher was uh, 2 of 4, had 5 points. Um, he played uh, 
1553 and uh, Isaac's played 1809. You know, the other thing that stood out to me just in being in the arena last night for the, for the first half and just seeing the crowd grow throughout the Lady Raider game. And by the way, the Raider riot, for the most part, it was pretty full for the Lady Raider game. They came out and supported the women's team, which I, thought was, which I thought was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but as the crowd grew, but just, you know, for the men's game, it sat way in the upper deck uh, in the southwest corner upstairs. Just the um, the fan knowledge base, I think, has grown exponentially over the past few years. And just the seeing, you know, people up there and, and into the game and, um, I mean, it it's impressive that that atmosphere at United Supermarkets Arena. I mean, we're talking about a team that no nobody was scared about playing, right? But I thought just just the the presentation, obviously the the music and everything that goes with it, but then just the the the, the way that the fans responded and reacted to certain things that took place on the court really stood out to me, and uh, it, it was. You know, it can obviously it can be a very intimidating atmosphere if you're playing the opponent, if you're the opponent. But you know, for opening night and week one, I mean, definitely people were excited to be there. I mean, mm-hmm. there was a lot of, lot, a lot of energy uh, in the building last night. You could just, you could just feel it, even, even through halftime uh, last night. So that, that's what, that's what stood out to me. Uh, one, one guy that we didn't get to see play last night that I, I really would have loved to have seen, and I think that. The fans would have loved to have seen as well. And this is a, a Northwestern State player. His name is Hansel Emanuel. And when he was six years old, uh, he's from the Dominican Republic. Uh, he uh, unfortunately had a, a retaining wall collapse on him that forced the amputation of one of his arms. And I want, I, you know, Fink and I were down there after our game and we're looking and Fink's like, look, this guy's got one arm. And so, I mean, Man, just just seeing him out on the floor and, you know, being able to handle the basketball and put up shots and dunks and things like that uh, and only have one arm was just, it's always inspiring, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. I um, mean, just, and apparently he's a motivational speaker and has a bunch of YouTube videos out, but um, he did not, he did not get to play last night, but he's, I mean, he's tall, he's athletic, he's six six. He can jump out of the gym, and he just, you know, unfortunately for him, when he was six years old, he lost one of his arms in an an accident and had to be amputated. Mm -hmm. But obviously has not let that deter him from being a college basketball player. And I'm like, God, for all the problems that everybody thinks they have, look at this young man and what he's overcome. No doubt. That's That's pretty pretty cool. Pretty impressive. Um, So, anyway, that that was my take on it uh, on last night. And, man, there's there's only more to come, and they'll be... They'll be back in action on Thursday, and uh, it was not full last night. I mean, there were, I mean, they they've, they've sold out the arena. It, it really it, doesn't matter right now. It, the students are making it so incredibly absolutely. cool. It doesn't even mm-hmm. have to be, it doesn't have to be full of the uh, townies as you like to call them. Yeah, it was the upper deck. I mean, for the most part, I mean, the lower deck mm-hmm. and the and the student section was was full, and and you know the it was it was loud and it was impressive and it was it was good. Uh, Tech will play Texas Southern on Thursday night. Uh, that's a seven o'clock tip time. We'll have it for you here on Double T ninety seven three. Coverage gets underway at six. We'll have Red Raider football Thursday night on one hundred point seven. The score with uh, Coach Joey McGuire as we get you ready for Texas Tech and Kansas on Saturday. So that's uh, that's the next action for the ladies. Uh, they don't play until Tuesday. They'll play Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Play Jackson State and then Colorado in back to back games. So Tuesday, Wednesday. And Saturday, they'll travel to Louisiana and they'll play uh, Louisiana in Lafayette on Sunday. So that will be their only true road game uh, of the non-conference. They'll play in Vegas over Thanksgiving, but that that's a, a tournament, and uh, that's you know obviously a neutral site for all of those teams. Do the men have any true road games? Uh, let me do a quick look here. They, they go to Maui. No, their first true road game is at TCU. Um, so not until Big 12 play. Yeah, they play They play uh, Jackson State, uh, but that's in Houston uh, as part of the HBCU Round Ball Classic. I don't think it's at the – maybe it is at Jackson State's home arena, but it doesn't say that – would, that would be the only one uh, December the 17th. 
Your morning blend of sports. K-State is uh, coming off a big win over Oklahoma. Of course, the Red Raiders off their 37-34 overtime win over number 22, Texas. And humor. Sure to tell them that. You, you suggested that. <laughs> and, of course, they got a big laugh. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Uh, somebody reminds me of a word that Finkner used last night. He this is this was on him. He came up with the word intentionality last night. Intentionality. Intentionality. Right. That's good. It was another word that he came up with too. See, I think that's great because everybody knows what that means. It's very mm-hmm. descriptive. I have no idea if it's yeah. legitimately a word or not, and I honestly don't care. I mean, it it makes complete sense to me. Right. 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 So anyway, so that was. Uh, that was one of the words that he came up with last night. There were there were a couple things last night, but anyway, we we were off to. We're, I think we're off to a good start. Good with our, with our broadcast. Mm-hmm. We, I heard a little we, bit of it. I thought it was great. We got uh, we, we got everything in. Got all, you know got the final score right. So got mm-hmm. in on time. Got and, out on time. And led him to a victory. And led him to a victory. That's right. We got out of the way. It was a little wonky there at the end because this gal for Corpus Christi hits a hits a three. And and so I mean we're it's a twenty point game, and hits the three, and she gets fouled on the play, and then there's a question as to whether it was a three or a two, and so I mean there's no time left on the clock, they're trying to get you know the men's game on time, and and we're trying to get out of the way of of Haxton and and his group so they can you know yeah I the, heard Haxton was like unplugging your cords yeah, and right. pushing your stuff out of the way <laughs> like shove me. well actually it wasn't Haxton it was one of his people right one of his people, yeah, right? Yeah. His people. Of his people. they were all dressed in black right, right? They're right. Like, and so I'm, I mean, I'm, you, I'm sorry you, you you need to leave Mr. You, Haxton's you, area you do like right you have to move out of the way right. I, I did think it was a little rude they did the orchestra play you off yeah. mm-hmm. that the, yeah. you guys could have finished your broadcast yeah I mean there was so anyway, it's like I mean, when the guy looked at you and he said, "and you said, hey, we have one more post game segment left," and you and he responded with, no, you "Adios, don't. muchacho." <laughs> did, they did. They did say that. <laughs> Adios, muchacho. Get get up and you you know you can't stay here anymore. Um, but then it took it took like three or four minutes, and Coach Gerlich stand there for the handshake line, and and finally they determined yes, it was the three. And I'm like, what in the world does it matter here? This game is l- over, and we're going to take all this time to look for this. <laughs> So they put the gal at the free throw line, and I was glad she missed it, so they they could have a twenty point. Because then they put point three on the on the clock. She misses the free throw, and uh, then there wasn't enough time to put the shot back up. So anyway, bottom line is they they won the game. Uh, so let's see. All right, a um, couple things from uh, from Coach McGuire. He uh, he was asked about Tyler Shuck uh, yesterday. Is he mentally and physically ready to play? Because it's either going to be Shuck or Donovan Smith because Baron Morton's been ruled out for Saturday. You know, mentally I do. I mean, I think mentally whenever we're sitting there talking about uh, going with him right there, it's like, uh, you know, take care of the football, getting us in the right plays. Uh, but you could definitely see the rust. I mean, the very first throw that he makes uh, to X, I mean, you definitely can see the rust. And it's just continuing, um, you know, to push him in practice. I mean, both, you know, we when we talk to Donovan and him, man, we just got to let it rip. Like, you, you, you can't be cautious. You can't be worried about – um, I mean, you got to be smart with the football, but you got to let it rip and, and have confidence in it. And so I think this is a big week to see where he's at, um, you know, and, and definitely see where Donovan's at. Donovan's really healthy right now, so I feel good about him um, with that. And, and I, think, I think that's a part because mentally there's no doubt he's there and, and totally gets it. Okay. Uh, you know, I think anytime anybody's been through an injury until you get hit, uh, or even when you've been hit like and broken collarbones like he has, I mean, it would certainly be understandable sure. to, to kind of have that in the not only in the back of your mind, the front of your mind, and especially when you're playing Division One college football. Although, I mean, he got hit very early on in that in that game here against uh, Baylor, so you know, it, it, I, I I get it, I understand, but man, it sure seems. It sure seems like uh, that he is a bit off. And that first throw, I mean, it didn't look like he had – doesn't look like he has any velocity. That's the word that I'm looking for, velocity with his, with his, with his throws. Yeah, but in his, in his throws down the field, the deep balls that he threw were 
were all underthrown. Even the even the great touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. I mean, was a pass that was underthrown. Mm-hmm. I mean, if the rece- if the defensive back doesn't fall down, it's you know, it's a easy pick right at him probably. All right, uh, another it was great great catch by the receiver. I mean, I'm not saying it was a terrible pass. I, I don't mean to. Uh, insinuate that because ultimately it got to where it needed to go and you re- you allowed your receiver to make a play but if the defensive back doesn't fall down it's probably not getting caught mm-hmm. at the very least another guy <laughs> that i'm uh I'm, con- I'm concerned about i'm curious about his status because he was taken out of the ball game and presumably put in concussion protocol after the targeting call on him was uh, Jaron Jaran bradley the uh, the receiver here's coach mcguire on bradley yeah, right now uh, we're trying to uh, get a feel that if I mean he's one that I I wouldn't say back or out. I mean he's working through the process. Um, you know that was a that was a really tough hit that he took. Um, you know, and when that happens, uh, you you got to be real careful. You know, Drew does a great job, but just overall the Big Twelve does a great job of making sure these guys are right before they go back in the game. Um, you know, he went through a workout yesterday. He didn't practice, but he went through lifts and everything like that, and he ran. And so we were just taking it day by day with him. Um, we have enough days to get him back if he is uh, – so I would say he's in percussion, uh, uh, concussion protocol. We have enough days to get him back. It's just, you know, does he have – is he symptom-free to play on Saturday? Oh man, that's a, that's a that's a tough call there. Sounds like. Yeah, no, and I appreciate the fact that they're doing everything they can to make mm-hmm. sure the student athlete is taken care of. There, it's not just about one football game, and so we we've seen the side effects and the ill effects to what's and what's the going quickness too. The, like if yeah. you've had one, how quick the second one seems to yeah. come if you're not so, if you're not fully back yet. But yeah, take as take as much time as you need need, need to take. I mean, if get it, make sure you get them right. But you're clearly where to. You know, you were with the injuries that you've had at the wide receiver position without having Cleveland there also. I mean, it hurt you. Yeah. It it absolutely did. And we can't whine too much. TCU didn't have their number one receiver as well. Mm-hmm. So, Shouldn't, though, if you're – don't I know this is what I do. I hear somebody enters the concussion protocol, they miss the next week's game. Like, the very few times that they do get to play in the next game – I that's I treat that as a, like getting a cupcake at the end of the day. Hey, look, I got a cupcake. It was great. I plan on them missing the next yeah. game. Expect the worst, hope for the best. See, yeah. it's my motto on life. And, I know, and Jeff's and, buying into it. Hey, did, uh, did did Coach McGuire say anything about JJ Sparkman and his availability for Saturday? If he did, it was in that first little blurb where he goes through so like goes five through or everybody. six players. Okay. Uh, we didn't go back to it. Okay. All right, so it didn't didn't get back to that. All right, well, hopefully, hopefully he'll be uh, okay. One guy that uh, that was back, and and I'm not going to get into this too much, but it was good to see Cameron Valdez mm-hmm. run the football. And yep. you know, there he's been available, uh, but there've been just you know with the way that uh, Taj Brooks and Sir Roderick Thompson have been running, uh, they didn't want to you know mess up what they were already doing. So, but it was good to see Valdez and. You know, sometimes those guys that, you know, late in the season who have been out uh, and they come in and have, quote, the fresh legs mm-hmm. uh, could really make an impact. And maybe maybe he's the guy that can make an impact down the stretch for you. Yeah, well, maybe so. He he looked good yet, or on on Saturday, no doubt about it. It's You can't ever have too many quality running backs. Yeah. It just feels like those guys are constantly getting hurt. Yeah. Uh, somebody makes this observation, and – I think to date it is, but they said, who would have thought the biggest game of the year would be against Kansas? I don't know if it's the biggest, but I mean, it's... it's right now it is. Right now, I mean, I right now it is, yeah. yeah. You certainly don't want to put yourself I mean, in a position where you have to win, you know, at Iowa State and home against Oklahoma to get yourself bowl eligible. I think if you'd have said that at the start of the year, you're like, oh man, don't don't really yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the Texas win was massive for sure, you, sure, for a lot of different reasons. But mm-hmm. um, I mean, right now you're in a situation where you need to win. So, yeah, the next game is massive, and you only have three left. Yeah, so it's it's huge. Uh, the other word that Finkner came up with last night, uh, in addition to intentionality, and I've never heard him say this, is boogie loo, boogie loo, boogie loo. <laughs> what does Boogie Lou mean? I, mean, I think they, uh, I think it was more about the kind of the style of play or the running, 
I don't know. It was Boogie Lou. <laughs> Boogie Lou was uh, another word that he used last night. <laughs> Boogie Lou and intentionality. So we are uh, off and rolling with Lady Raider basketball. We've got two new words from you Webster's. guys are mid season four. <laughs> mid season four. Yes. <laughs> You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973.com.